G'day football fans and welcome back to episode 6 of our Juventus Rebuild here on Dylan on the Ball. Today we are taking on Sassuolo, it's the Locatelli derby, I'm calling it that, I'm making it a thing, I don't care, even if it's not important to you, it's important to me. I, it means something. It's the Locatelli derby. We've played about six games or something like that since you were last here. The transfer window is also open, so there's a little bit to catch you up on. Before we get to that though, I will just remind you to please leave us a like down below. Why not? Subscribe if you're new around here. We're almost at 100. We're so, so very close. It, look, I'm excited by it. I, you might not be. I, I'd love it if you subscribe too. Comment what you think of the video. If you think there's anyone else we should go for in January, all that great stuff. But I mean, maybe there's not anyone you think we should go for because those that we have brought in are just absolutely exceptional. I don't know. The first bit that I will catch you up on before we get to the highlights, we'll do the transfers. The first bit is, look, it's a bit of a joke. It's it's ridiculous. Let's just get to it and, and you'll see how ridiculous it is. No need to adjust your screen. No, there's nothing. You're not seeing things. Manchester United legitimately, six months after letting Paul Pogba go for free, offered 85 million euros for him. It's, look, it, there's no words to explain it, to be completely honest with you. It's just, it's a bit ridiculous. And uh, look, I rejected it for the sake of realism. I didn't, as much as it would be funny, it'd be a great meme if he, if United spent, you know, all up, you know, uh, almost 200 million euros on the guy and let him go for free twice to Juve. That would be very funny. I would absolutely love that. But also for realism, it's a, it would be sort of ridiculous and, I, and I'm not a huge fan of it. So Paul Bogba here to stay. He's not off to United this time, <laughs> I guess. Um, so we do hang on to his services, thankfully. Next up, there's been one outgoing and it's, I mean, it's one I hinted at. It's one that's not super important to me, but uh, it is a, uh, you know, quite a big player in world football over the last decade or so. It is Angel Di Maria. He was getting slower and slower and slower. He's still absolute quality. He might fit in somewhere. That place just wasn't at Juve right now. So he has gone to Aston Villa, which may give you a little bit of an insight into who we brought in because we did use it in a swap deal. I think we paid them about 14 million plus Angel Di Maria for Leon Bailey. We have gone from one end of the spectrum to the other. So we've gone from someone who's absolutely getting slower and slower to someone who is the one of the quickest in the game. He's an absolute rocket, quality player, quality dribbler, decent finishing, good long shots, all that sort of stuff. Everything you'd want from like an inverted winger, I suppose. So he'll play sort of in rotation with Chiesa. I then think from next season, we might actually look to sell Kostic so that our left wing rotation is between Chiesa and Gakpo, and then our right wing is Kulisevsky and Bailey. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let me know if that doesn't make any sense. And uh, look, I'm happy to, to adapt the squad to what you guys reckon. But I thought Leon Bailey would be a great addition, possibly underutilized at Aston Villa by, uh, by Steven Gerrard, at least. He seems to have come into a bit of form now under Unai Emery or since, since Gerard left, really. The only other bit of business we have done is, I mean, look, it's less surprising or less out of nowhere. It is Manuel Locatelli. You can see he's ours. We have forked out the amount of money. I can't remember what it was. The, whatever, how much they had agreed that his fee would be if we wanted him along the line of his loan. We actually had Sassuolo come to us and say that we weren't playing Manuel Locatelli enough, like that, that they were going to recall him from his loan because we weren't playing it, but which is ridiculous. Also, shut the hell up. He, he's mine. I don't care. So we bought him. We activated the, uh, the sale clause, I guess. I mean, that's more of a football manager thing. Than if we bought the guy. Look, there was an agreed clause. We paid it. We've got the guy. We've got two brilliant holding midfields in Locatelli and Lima, who in rotation will just about be Champions League winning, I'd have to think. Anyway, that's enough of a wrap up. Let me know if you think we should do any more business or if there's anyone you think should be out the door and we should try to get rid of. You may have clocked that uh, Alexandro has had an offer. If it's an acceptable offer, I'll replace him with a left back, I'm not sure. I'm happy to see him go. He's, you know, he's only got six months left on his contract, I think. So I'm not super upset if someone wants to buy him now rather than us just replace, like, lose him for free and then replace him in the summer anyway. Doesn't bother me anyway. That's enough about that though. Let's get through to the highlights. There has been about seven games since you were last here. So we have absolutely got to get cracking into these highlights. The first game was actually our home match against Sassuolo and getting the only goal of the game. It's not clean, but it is Angel Di Maria. 
it may be, may end up being his last. No, I think he has another goal somewhere in this compilation, but he gets a nice header here that he powers straight at the keeper who can't keep it out. And we take all three points against Sassuolo, hoping for a better performance today. Next up, it was away to Bologna where Marco Arnautovic did exactly what we've done to about 13,000 goalkeepers this season, where we've just dinked it over them. I, I don't think I've actually seen someone in FIFA do that, but uh, it hurt me. So every highlight from then, I was trying to chip their goalkeeper. It finally worked. It's Dusan Vlaovic, a beautiful little dink over to the far post. Whoever's coming in at the far post may have been, or Kostic maybe, nearly steals a goal away from him, but it is a one-all draw. I think our chip was better though, so we won the, like that's the moral victory, you know. It was then away to Benfica in the Champions League, the last match of our group stage, and Cody Gakpo gets himself another penalty there, then stands still for some reason after he's thumped that one in. I don't really get it. Why not? He thumps it down the middle. I've done that a couple of times with him. Probably need to place the next one or it'll get saved. They then drew level through some bloke who got absolutely free. I don't know who it is. I've got to be honest. Who, what does that say? Araujo? I don't know. He powers a header. I mean, it's a thumping header. I'm not sure what Chesney's trying to say, but it wasn't, wasn't the header. Probably didn't have a chance though. That was one all. Then guess who? I, I'm pretty sure that's Di Maria. I think that's Di Maria against an old side of his. He gets played in. Nice little through ball. Fires it across their keeper, Vlakadimas, or whatever the, however you say it. He also doesn't try to save the right ball, and we win 2-1. It was then, why does it say one all already? That, it gives it away. We then hosted Salernitana, Dusan Vlaovic gets us underway. A nice little chipped cross over. The keeper doesn't come out for it when he possibly could have done. Vlaovic gets to it, thumps it between the keeper's legs. The keeper doesn't even move, doesn't react. That's 1-0. They then draw level. It's Bule Dia from the penalty spot. Getting kind of sick of conceding penalties, but at this stage it was a one-all draw. Two points dropped at home. Not too happy with that one. Then even less happy with this effort. We finally lose this season. We have been undefeated up to this point in the league. And finally it's Quagliarella putting Sampdoria up 1-0, taking all three points, and we lose one. Then, hosting Empoli, we get a nice 1-0 win, thanks to Adrian Rabio yet again, making a great run from deep into the box to get on the end of this cross. Gets his head up on target, manages to beat the keeper up. Before the keeper can really react, it's past him. Thankfully, back to winning ways, we take all three points. Then lastly, it was away to Udinese, where it looked like our attack had been foiled, but Cody Gakpo got the rebound from that tackle. Plays in Dusan Vlaovic with a nice crisp pass through. Dusan Vlaovic then finishes hard across the keeper, who looks a bit silly, but it's 1-0 to us. We don't mind. I don't know what happened to our players nearly running in the box there, but does not distract Gerard De La Feu, or however the hell you say it. He makes it 1-0, pops it in the bottom corner. Chesney goes the wrong way. Chesney did actually save another penalty from De La Feu. Do the, however, whatever. We managed to win it in the 79th minute. Almost United boy Pogba gets the winning goal. Nice little through ball here from Diogo Dallo. Just down the side of the defender. Then the outside of the foot finish from Paul Pogba is absolutely sensational to give us all three points. And that's these highlights done. So just to confirm... Off the back of those highlights, we have topped our Champions League group, meaning we get to be drawn against one of the sides that finished second in their group, which, I mean, hopefully means well. We'll see in a second. I'll, you know, oh, live reaction to our draw, I guess. Everyone's so excited about that. I can tell already. We topped the group mostly thanks to that win over PSG. PSG did end up beating Pauk, so they do finish second, so we may end up facing them in one of the knockout rounds. It won't be the round of 16 though. In the round of 16, we have got Leverkusen. All right, okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's pretty good. Could we have got anyone worse? We could have got Manchester City or Inter. No, we couldn't get. So you can't get people from your country in the round of 16 or people that were in your group, right? So of the people that finished second, we could have got Manchester City, Salzburg, Leipzig, Marseille. We've got Leverkusen. I'm look. I'm pretty content with that. They're probably oh, what the out of those sides probably like the fourth best or fifth best or something including all the I mean 
this second page is clearly the better page. Um, sort of a horrid draw for Sevilla. You, you have to feel for them. And then for Sporting Club Portugal, not great. Us though, we've got a decent one. I'm pretty happy with that. We've got Leverkusen. That will be one of the upcoming videos, I'm sure, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. See how the, uh, we'll see how the season pans out. As for the league, we have been roped in a little bit. I, I, I think as of the last video, we actually had closer to an eight or nine point lead maybe, but courtesy of the, who'd we draw against? We drew against Salernitana. Uh, was there anyone else we drew against? Uh, oops, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Bologna, we drew with Bologna and Salernitana. We then also, of course, lost to Sampdoria courtesy of Quagliarella, which uh, as far as losing a game in FIFA, I'm happy for it to be Quagliarella because I can't remember what FIFA, it may have been like FIFA 15 or 16 or something like that. He had like, I mean, he was still getting old then. It's, he's a pensioner now, but back then he had, he wasn't quick. He wasn't that fantastic in any other respect, but his shot power was like 94 or something like that. And he was just absolutely lead. You just bang him in with, from range with him anytime you used it. It was fantastic huge fan. So at the halfway stage of the league, to be up by five points, having lost only the one game, look, I think that's a pretty good result. I'll, I'll take that. Today's opponents, Sassuolo, are down in 14th. They've just been given a nice hefty paycheck from the Locatelli deal. So I guess they'll be looking to make improvements in January. So maybe we'll catch the, the real uh, brunt of that here. But all in all, it's the Locatelli derby. Let's get to it. Our Juventus side today away at Forest Park Stadium, very real name, wearing our absolutely gorgeous alternate kit. It is Chesney in goals, a backline of Dallo, Bremer, Rugani and Grimaldo. Midfield three of Locatelli, of course. Pogba and Moretti ahead of him, with Bailey making his debut for us on the right, Kostic on the left, and Dusan Vlaovic up front. We are looking fantastic. I mean, in the games that I've played, the whole thing, we've looked fantastic. In the highlights, we had a bit of a dip through December and looking to definitely come through January absolutely flying in the league, hopefully. So we get through to the Champions League knockouts and we are absolutely bang on form. As for our hosts, Sassuolo today, it is Consigli in goals, who I think is about 50 years old. Backline of Tolian Giallo. Giallo? Giallo? Whoever that is, Romagna and Centelles. Tolian... I think that's Jeremy Tol Tolian, who used to be at, I want to say Dortmund. Mm, don't quote me on that. Um, or fact check it. Just trust me, I think, because uh, one of us is going to get our feelings hurt otherwise. Midfield three is Lopez, oh, Enrique, and this other guy. Thorstved? Thorstved? I don't know how to say it. Look, I'm going to go with Thorstved. Um, just, like, sort of rush through it. Nobody can really understand the, like, Annunciation of so anyway front line is Berardi on the right of course Pinamonti up front and Traore on the, the left clearly one of those sides We are definitely better than we're looking to make the most of today's game of course watching out for the talent of Domenico Berardi up front Traore is an up-and-comer Pinamonti's decent enough I, I suppose and after how much I struggled with his name I'm absolutely Assuming that Thorsfeder will have some sort of say in today's game enough of build-up though I've been recording for way too long to only just be getting to the game. You guys are probably bored. Let's get to it. Here we go then. It's time. It's the Locatelli Derby. Get excited. We are at an absolutely gorgeous green and black forest park state. That's sort of, sort of fitting. I, I kind of like it actually. <laughs> I'll just remind you guys before we kick off to please leave us a like down below. Subscribe if you're new. Comment what you think of it. All the stuff. We're hoping to get to 100 subs. That would be absolutely incredible. I, look, it, I'm just doing this because it's fun for me. You guys following and, and following along and having a good time too is means the world to me. It's, it's kind of cool. Also down in the description below, there is the Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Plenty happening there. I mean, somewhat. Anyway, I'll try to keep up with them as well. And uh, I'll try to also play some good football and absolutely spank Sassuolo in honor of Locatelli. All right, we have kicked off, which is always a good sign because I love just having the ball at our feet. We lose it straight away though, so that's good. I'm very glad at moments like these that it, this channel's not yet at the stage of having a face cam um, because it is 33 degrees. It is one o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday morning. Oh, afternoon, I guess. Um, I, I'm not wearing a shirt because holy hell, it's way too hot. It's 30, oh, it's Vlaovic is through straight away. Vlaovic, across the keeper, goal. Beautiful, easy as that. I definitely could have 
like slid it across for Leon Bailey to get his first goal for the club. But I thought, look, let's just get it underway with a nice, good finish here. Good through ball, well weighted out in front of Dusan Vlaovic. He finishes absolutely perfectly. Cross Consigli, no chance for him. Just inside the post, it's 1-0 straight away. Only took us five minutes to get the first goal. Do have to remind you guys, like, it's on Legendary. I haven't changed anything. It's just, I'm just, you know, I'm just good, man. No, I don't know. I don't know. I've just been playing FIFA since, I think FIFA 2000 was my first FIFA. So, uh, look, I've played a couple of games of FIFA, I'll say. Vlaovic with another chance. Volley, goal. That is absolutely filthy. It is a nice little dinked ball over from Filip Kostic. Dusan Vlaovic in the eighth minute gets his second goal. Yeah, you heard that right. And it's a nice little, I mean, look, I wouldn't say a scissor kick, but it's, it's an, he's horizontal when he's volleying it. The head backline well out of shape. Nice little sort of scissor kick volley thing across the keeper in the bottom corner, in off the post, just squeezes in. And just already we are seeing that, look, we're just brilliant, aren't we? We're just absolutely filthy. No hope, no hope this Sassuolo side. Locatelli made the right call moving. So 2-0 it is already within 10 minutes. I suppose I should like talk a little bit about the World Cup. It's been, uh, you know, fine, I, I guess. As from an Australian point of view, um, it's, look, there's been one game. Tonight is Tunisia, uh, which is about eight o'clock my time. So in about seven hours time for me. And if you're watching this as it comes out, which should be at six o'clock my time, um, look, it, we're about, Oh, big save. Oh, wow. Um, I'm I'm hoping just, just for Australia to put on a decent performance, you know. I mean, we're not going to hope for, that they get through or anything. That's possibly unrealistic with Denmark to go after today's game. But, look, I'll, I'll take a good performance. Here's Bailey from range. Oh, that would have been... What a first goal that would have been. That was absolutely mental. Leon Bailey will take the corner to... Swing it in towards the middle, towards Dallo, doesn't win it cleanly. Grimaldo also doesn't win it. Rugani, oh, I mean, it it changed very late to him, so he didn't quite get the purchase on the volley. Uh, back to the World Cup, um, I'm, I'm also, like, my, my grandfather's Croatian. Um, so every, you know, four years for a month, I become semi-Croatian. Um, and, and, you know, want to see them do well as well. So they're another team that I'm, you know, keen on watching. The first game wasn't great against, what was it, Morocco or whatever. Uh, oh, not a, not a clean header there, um, which, you know, it's fine. You're, they're allowed to stink it up for one for one game in an absolute horrid climate. Here's Kostic with another cross towards Vlaovic. Has he got that in? He snuck that in too. You are absolutely joking me. That's a hat-trick for Dusan Vlaovic in 20 minutes. I think possibly three assists for Filip Kostic. I don't understand how he squeezed that one in. I'll be honest. Whoever this is, Grimaldo putting on the tricks, giving it to... What? He gave it to Kostic, who swung it in towards Vlaovic, who, from the tightest of angles, helps it on, it, helps it on its way. Far out. Straight at Consigli, who can't keep it out, because he's standing back too far maybe? I don't know. If he had come towards it, he would have saved it. Anyway, it's 3-0. Was that another one from Vlaovic? It is. It's his hat trick already. And uh, I think that takes him, I think he might have been equal with Paul Pogba in our top scorers. I know it was It was definitely at the start of this video. Oops. Berardi now in the box. Nice chance. No, back heels it into uh, Grimaldo for whatever reason. Um, I know it was at the start of this video who the top scorer was, but you know me. I'm not going to pay really into attention to every detail. Kostic with another chance here. This time he'll come back on the inside, cross it out for Dallo. Dallo with a chance now to cross. Gets a little bit of space. No, headed away quite easily really by whoever that was. Sen Centelles? Centels? I don't know what to call him. Oh, big through ball there from Pinamonti out towards Traore. Traore with a chance to run. They can now play in Berardi. Goal. All right, we've been left way too open. We've been a bit silly with slide tackles and people not being good, uh, you know. <laughs> but they have absolutely rinsed through us. Domenico Berardi getting way, way too much space in the box. Fires it past Chesney, who can't 
do much, but he, you know, it's not his fault at all. He'd made himself big enough. It was just a, a class finish from someone who was given too much room. All right, well, that that's annoying, isn't it? Because I thought, you know, we've been playing very... All right, he's up. He's going to just go off the plane. Relax. Alex Santeles. Really? Alex Tellez? Really? Chance for the free kick. Uh, yeah, it's annoying that it, we've conceded because uh, we've been dominant. Here's the free kick from Dallow. Headed away twice. I don't know why that second guy did that because he was completely open. Grimaldo will fire it out towards Dallow. Dallow to Bailey to swing it in towards Pogba. Big header. Goal. First assist for Juve for Leon Bailey. Manages to find Pogba making a great run into the box. Gets up. Wins a towering header past Consigli for 4 1. Jumps up very well. Beats, I can't say his name, Jalo, Diallo, Diallo, Di, I don't know. Pogba does very well. Powers the header down into the bottom corner. Pass keeper. It's 4 1. We should have ha we should have a clean sheet. We should be doing better. To anyway, it's 4 1. I think this may be a very quick rebuild because um, it seems like we're going to absolutely storm the, uh, like, you know, storm. Uh, that's probably not the right phrasing. Uh, we're going to run away with the league. Champions League. Look, if we get to a final, that's pretty good. Dial oh, Dallo. Oh, another save. Oh, he was offside. Okay, he's offside this time. If you get to the Champions, through the Champions League, look, I don't know if I should play every game because if I play every game at this rate, we are just going to win the Champions League and that might be a bit boring to just go for one season, uh, make, you know, I mean, decent enough moves. It's not It's not like I've changed the complete shape of the team or everything about them, but... Oh, Barati again. Oh, straight to Chesney's not. Um, yeah, it's not like I've completely changed the entire squad. I've made like, you know, how many moves? Five, four changes? Five changes? Whatever. Uh, here's Leon Bailey. Can he score? Long shot? No, terrible. Okay, horrible. Don't finesse shot with Leon Bailey, we've learned. Um, and also one season, if we were to do it in one season, it sort of, you know, stops people being able to grow. Like the signing of Diogo Dallo. He's like a, you know, I suppose at the end of season two, he's probably going to be like an 84 or something. As opposed to the end of season one, where he's still going to be like 80, 80. What? What's happening? What is happening? We cannot defend this game. We managed to get a clean sheet against bloody PSG. With Mbappe and 60 minutes of Messi and Neymar. It, it, what's happening? I nearly want to say Messi. It's two goals for Sassuolo. This time, I think it's Pinamonti. He's found by... Uh, look, I don't know. I'm going to say it's Traore. Again, too much room. Nobody gets close enough to closing him down. Fires it across Chesney. It's bloody 4-2. What's happening? What is happening? Almost half time. I'm just getting annoyed about defending now. Because we clearly. That's another foul. That's another yellow card for Centeles. You are an absolute clown. Why have you done that? Why have you done that, you absolute pill? Two stupid slide tackles in absolute no man's land. There's no need for those tackles there. And now they've got a red card. What's happening? And they're taking off one of their goal scorers. This is dumb. This is dumb. Another long range free kick effort for Diallo. Dallo here. Damn it. He'll swing it in towards someone. Flavich wins the header. Manages to put it well wide though. You absolute spoon. Damn it. He's got his hat trick though. Even though two, one of them was missing the target apparently. What an absolute Adonis. He's a gorgeous, gorgeous man. It'll probably be half time as soon as this hits someone head. someone's head. Damn it. Can't talk today. It's too hot. Grimaldo wins it. Gives it to Kostic. Oh, let's thump it towards the keeper. Okay, well, I tried to shoot sort of. Didn't work out. The first half's working out though. I mean, we're up 4-2. We shouldn't have conceded the goals that we have. We've been dominant. We've sliced through them like hot butter through knife. It's 4-2 thanks to Dusan Vlahovic's hat trick. Second half underway. Um, going back to what I was saying about whether this should go into a second season. Let me know what you think. Whether you think we should, you know, if depending on what happens in the second half of the season, which I, at this point, I'm assuming we win the league, because <laughs> um, it. It very much seems like it. Let me know what you think we should do. If we win the league convincingly, should we go for a second season? Should we play all of the games? Oh, I doubt. Bloody Vlaovic was making that run. Uh, in the Champions League, should we play all of the like second legs, not the first leg? Should we skip through rounds to see you know, what happens rather than actually play them? Because if we... 
I have a feeling if we play them, we're just going to absolutely smash through teams, uh, which isn't the most interesting viewing. And, you know, realism, I guess, is an issue. Because we're just, it's at this point, when we're this good already, half a season in, it's a bit ridiculous. How is that not a foul? <laughs> that was ridiculous. And that was also a terrible pass from Pogba. Maybe that's how we're screwing the pooch defensively, is just silly errors like that. Berardi now comes into the box. Brigani doesn't win the... God damn it, it's 4-3. Brigani, you should have won that goddamn tackle. What's happening? Berardi with the second goal. It's 4-3. They're actually in with a sniff now. What's that? Brigani with the limp... Limpest... I was going to say another something not uh, PG. Brigani, like, sticks a toenail out instead of tackling the ball properly. And Berardi finishes again. How are we doing? How did Messi not do this? This is stupid. All right, 4-3. I've, clearly, I've lost the plot. Because we should have been, you know, well clear of this Sassolo team. But instead, we're one goal up. Dusan Vlaovic's hat trick has been erased, basically. We're only up by Paul Pogba's goal. And now they're coming forward again. Grimaldo chases down Tolyan. Tolyan with a cross. Oh, goodness me, that was scary. Bremer tries to pass it into his own net, but thankfully Chesney is there. Now, what can we do? Why have Vlaovic and bloody Dallo made the same run there? Bailey finds Kostic out wide. He can fire it across the keeper, maybe? Oh, just wide. Oh, man. I mean, if the runs were better earlier in that move, I think that was a better chance, but... We made a decent chance of it, just misses from Kostic. And now the 10 men, I'm sure Defrel is an attacking player. Ah, just, yeah, just remember they're 10 men. They managed to, what? Since their red card, have they pulled just the one back? Are they winning since the red card? Goodness me. Traore in the box, tackled by Dallo. Who puts it out for a corner? Mmm. Short corner. Enrique, whoever that is, takes it into the box, gives it to Lopez. Lopez tackled. Now we can counter. Let's get it down the other end. Vlaovic runs into Moretti. Thank you, Vlaovic. Thanks, mate. Great bloke. Here's Traore. Into the box. Past Grimaldo. Tries to fire it in. Instead... Oh, wins it. Oh, wins it. Oh, thank God for Bremer there. Bremer coming in clutch with the interception when it seemed like they were going to score. Now Vlaovic has got it out to Kostic, who is in behind, making a great run. Can he find someone? Oh, he found Vlaovic, but Vlaovic couldn't put the finishing touch on it. He managed to control the ball instead of trying to just finish it. Paul Pogba wins us the ball back there, thankfully. Oh, dear. But we lose it straight away. Here's Enrique, finding Traore, finding Gallardo, whoever that is. That's the guy who came on for someone, I don't know, Pinamonte maybe. Another shot for Sassuolo. Man, we are at absolute sixes and sevens defensively this game. This has been stupid. 73 minutes in, we're only up by the one goal. Remember when I was bragging earlier about being really good and this was on Legendary and I was just way too good and they can't even get near us? Now look at us, this is bloody stupid. Is <laughs> Bailey, big switch out to Bailey. Bailey can't find Dallow. He also can't find Vlaovic because Vlaovic is trying to run in behind straight away for some stupid reason. That's clearly a foul because Traore didn't try to win the ball there, but that's fine. Traore into Fratesi. Lopez finds Defrel. Defrel, good little somehow outside of the foot pass there to Traore. Back to Gallardo. Gallardo, whatever. Dallo wins that one from him. Dallo can then play Bailey. Bailey, oh my god, goes into goes into danger, basically. Vlaovic now plays Grimaldo. We've got a decent amount of room here. Oh, but Moretti's offside for sure. Oh, it didn't count because he didn't get the ball. Okay, well, that's kind. <laughs> Here's Regani playing it to Bremer. Out the right for Dallo. Plays Pogba. Good run from Pogba. Pogba back to Bailey. <laughs> Oh my god, Bailey. Oh my god, Leon Bailey. That is looking like the worst transfer of all time. Swapping out like multiple time Champions League winner or whatever. Angel Di Maria for a guy who nearly puts a good chance out for a throw in. Getting down to the nitty gritty now. It is 84th minute, one goal lead. Kostic plays Locatelli, the Locatelli derby. He's been 
not great. I'll be completely honest. Um, because if he was great, we probably wouldn't have conceded the goals we have. Uh, Bailey now on the right. Can he get away from Gallard? Gallard Gallardo? Sort of. Gives it back to Dallo. Dallo to Miretti. In a bit of space. Have a go. Off the bar. No, you're kidding. That would have been absolutely perfect. Kostic now with it. Swinging towards Vlaovic. Can't win it. Pogba though. On the volley. Can't get it through. Headed away by Traore. Bailey will... Ooh, just about keep that in. For Dallo. Dallo finds Miretti again. Oh, that was nearly thrown away there. Grimaldo crosses it. Straight to them. They are going to run away. It's the last throw of the dice for Sassuolo. It's a through ball for Pirati. He is through. This is their last chance, surely. And they've screwed it. Locatelli gets the last touch in the Locatelli derby. Lockie? And we have won 4-3. Oh my god, what an absolute shambles that was. My goodness. Not going to show all seven because I just, it's gone too long already. Here's a nice volley though from Vlaovic across the keeper. Consigli, yeah, probably could have done something about it. Didn't though. He did concede four goals. Three of them to this man. Dusan Vlaovic, a nice side foot volley thing there. Into the bottom corner, in off the far post. And then to make it 4-1 at the time, Bailey manages to swing this one in towards Pogba, who with an absolute towering header, gets there just in front of Jarlo, the uh, centre-back for Sassuolo. Powers it past the keeper, ends up being the winning goal. Great goal for Paul Pogba, yet another one this season. We'll take the three points, I guess. So there is confirmation of our 4-3 win over Sassuolo just above this Cremonese fixture up next. Again, we probably should have been far and away the better side. I mean, we should have been absolutely in the clear, thumping them really. And we didn't do too well. Uh, I'm not super pleased with it. I am pleased with how easily we sliced through them in the first half. Pretty content with that. Should see more of that in the coming weeks and months, I suppose. Next video, we'll come back for the first leg against Leverkusen here on the 22nd of February there. There is, I mean, four games really, because this will be a cup fixture here. And if we win that, we'll then have more probably before that. Anyway, we've got Cremonese, Empoli, Sampdoria, someone in the cup, Torino, Monza, and Lecce before the Leverkusen game. I'm assuming what we'll do is we'll win that one convincingly by in theory, and then the second leg will just be a breeze and we'll be able to do the just the highlights for that one. The transfer window does end before that next video, so make sure in the comments down below to get in any useful additions you think we should make. We don't have too much money left. I think we've probably got about 20 or 30 million left, maybe something like that. So make sure to maybe keep that one in mind, unless we do sell someone for a big amount of money, in which case we'll have to replace whoever that is, I guess. Anyway, that'll do it. Again, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe if you're new, comment what you think of the video, who we should buy, how I can become better at defending, all that stuff. Comment it down below. Follow us on the social medias, all the good stuff. And until next time, when we go again, this time in the Champions League, peace.